Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to backtest Reina Tio's presented enhanced turtle trading strategy in Python. I really appreciate Reina exactly defining the trading strategy parameters, so we can use that, code a backtest based on the provided logic, and then test that on multiple assets. So, no matter what the results will be, these videos are not meant to prove someone wrong. Additionally, this video is just for educational and informational purposes only, so keep that in mind. Let's take a look at the trading strategy itself. Pretty straightforward. We are buying when the price breaks above the 200 day high. Simultaneously, we are setting a stop loss two times the ATR, that short form for average to range from the entry price. We are also setting a trading stop loss on the 10 day low. The risk management part I'm simply ignoring here because it won't have an impact on the relative PL you're doing. And I'm also not covering the short side in this video. Dependent on the feedback on this video, I will do a second part where we are bulk backtesting. So we are applying this strategy on a huge data set containing multiple assets to see on which ones this is working best. So if you're interested in that, be invited to leave a like and comment below. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, let's get started. We need some libraries, Y Finance to pull asset prices, Pandas for data handling, and TA to calculate technical indicators conveniently. In this case, we only need one technical indicator, which is the ATR. The rest we are calculating ourselves. Next, I'm going to pull asset prices for the S&P 500. So I'm using YF's download function and provide the ticker symbol for the S&P 500, which is this one here just as an example. And I'm starting in the beginning of 2018. Also, just an example, you can take whatever time horizon you're interested in. So with that, I'm getting the open high, low close data frame with daily data starting 2018 going until the last available trading date, which is this Friday, 15th of December. Next, we want to calculate the parameters and the first one is our buying condition which is the 200 day high so i'm adding a column to this data frame calling that 200 day high and this is simply rolling over the high column and finds the maximum value with a 200 day rolling window so we are taking the high column roll over it with a 200 window and take the maximum value with that you're getting the 200 day high. Similar logic for the low value. So I'm just creating another column here, calling that 10 day low, which is representing the trading stop loss as mentioned in the beginning. And this has the exact same logic. So this just rolling over the low column and then takes a 10 day window and takes the minimum value. So with that, we have both our buying and our trading stop loss defined. So we have two new columns here containing the 200 day high and the 10 day low. Next, we need the ATR for the fixed stop loss. So the ATR I'm just calculating using the TA library. So I'm just accessing the volatility functions, take the average true range and provide the high, the low and the close as these are the columns or the parameters you need to calculate the ATR. With that, I'm getting my ATR value here in this column and we are nearly done with setting up the data frame. Last but not least, we need to shift the open column one row back. Why is that? Because if you're getting a signal, so a buying signal, also a selling signal, you're always buying or selling on the next day's open. You cannot sell on the same day. This is why I just take the next day's open and shift it back to get the right buy and sell price. So we don't have a forward looking bias or any bias in our backtests. 
So I'm just calling that price because it's either a buy or a sell price. I'm gonna take the open and shift it back one row. So with that, just to show you how this is looking like, I have this value, which is just the next day's open on every single row. So if I'm getting a buying signal here in this row, I will buy for this price, which is the next day's open. So I simply have the next day's open in the same row as my signal makes stuff way easier. Now, as you might have seen, there are a lot of NAN values, which are simply due to the fact that we are using rolling functions. So we are just getting rid of them by using drop NA and we are going to in place the current data frame. So with that, I'm just getting rid of all the NAN values and I'm starting in October 2018, which makes sense because we are dropping the first 200 rows as we don't have values for them as we are taking the 200 day rolling high here. With that data frame, I can construct my backtest and the backtesting logic will be straightforward. So I'm just looping over this data frame, check for my buying condition, then I'm storing the buy price, also store the stop load loss, which is the buy price minus the ATR value times two. And for the selling part, if I'm in a position, I'm checking is my low small or equal to my stop loss value, which I've defined when buying, or then comes the trading stop loss part. So that was the fixed stop loss part or my low is small or equal to the 10 day low. So this way. So let's code that all together. So just looping over the data frame. We are working with a position flag. So this just stores if we are currently in a position. So initially we are not in a position and I'm going to create a profits list where we are storing the relative profit of the trade. So now let's loop for index row in the F iteros. And then if we are not in a position, which is initially the case, if not in position and my high value is greater or equal to the 200 day high value. So this is as a reminder, our buying condition because we are buying once the price crosses above the 200 day high. When this is the case, I have my buying condition fulfilled. So I'm just storing my buy price using the price value. So this is simply this column value. And what I'm also doing is to define my, oh sorry, my stop loss. And my stop loss is my buy price minus the row's ATR value. So when I'm getting the signal, I have my ATR value times two. This was the defined fixed stop loss. And that's already it for the buying conditions. So we can just set the position flag to true now as we are in a position now. Now we need the condition if we are in a position. So this is the selling condition. And my selling condition is either my row low is smaller or equal to my stop loss, which is being defined when I'm buying, or my low value is smaller or equal to my 10 day low. This is the trailing stop loss. And then I have my sell price, same story as before. So simply my price value, and then I can calculate my profit. And my profit is simply my sell price minus the buy price in relation to the buy price. So then I have my relative profit of the trade, excluding trading fees for now. So my profit is my sell price, minus my buy price in relation to my buy price. And then I'm appending that to my profits list here, profits append profit, and finally set my position flag to false. And that's already it for the backtest. So let's execute that. And 
With that, we have the profits of this strategy on the S&P 500 since 2018. So let's take a look at the profits. So we have a list here. What you see on first sight is the very low amount of trades here, right? So to make it easier to work with this, I'm transforming that to a series. So we have it in a, in a series here and then you can accumulate those returns by adding a one and take the cumulative product here. And then you see the development of your trades. So in the end, this strategy without considering trading fees made 13%, which is, let's say, uh, quite disappointing considering the S&P 500 development. So if I want to show that in a, in a chart here, you see that the strategy seems to work out, then get some setbacks and ends at 13% profit here. All right, let us consider another asset type now. So for instance, Rayner was considering the US dollar in relation to the Canadian dollar. So let's do that as well. So we're just taking US dollar CAD equals X. So that is the ticker symbol for US dollar CAD. And we are just executing everything again and finally get the cumulative return for the strategy on US dollar Canadian dollar. So what we are seeing again is a very low amount of trades here. In the end, we would have made 1.6% return. To be fair, it's Forex, so it's usually traded with leverage. But as you see, since 2018, seven trades, that's very, very low. Let's finally check out again another asset type. So we are moving to the commodity sector here. So let's take the brand that is BZ equals F. So we are executing everything again. And here we are actually getting quite an insane return. But again, as you see, we only have five trades here with some huge returns actually, but since 2018, five trades, that is, let's say, problematic. But anyhow, I would like to, yeah, take a deeper dive here and uh, check out way more assets and see if we can extract some more trades, applying the strategy on a wider a horizon of assets and find out where and on which assets this is actually working. So I hope you liked this video so far. Leave it a like, leave a comment and we are going to tackle that. It's going to be interesting. Thanks a lot for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the upcoming videos. Bye bye.